go to the book of 1 Samuel. We're going to be in chapter 17. Very familiar scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 29. Everybody knows the account here. The, the armies of Israel are facing the Philistines. Their, their champion, the giant Goliath, is coming out and taunting them and messing with them and putting a fear in them. And, and David comes on the scene and he's asking about what's going on. And in verse 29 here, uh, David's brother gets mad at him for coming up there and asking what he's asking and all this stuff. And David says, And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? We're going to read some more scripture, but I want to say something before we go to the rest of the scripture. There is a cause. We as the children of God have a cause. That cause is the cause of Christ. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning. There is a world out there that is deceived. There is a world out there that is lost. There are churches out there that are deceived. And we have a cause to take them the truth of the word of the living God. To present to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have a cause. This is what we were called for. We were not called to just gather in our churches on Sundays. We were not called just to build bank accounts. We were not called to have dinners. We were not called to have recreation. We were called to proclaim Jesus Christ and Him crucified. There is a cause. They had a cause here. Their, their cause was to set up a nation that represented God, to set up a nation that would be a testimony to the world, to set up a nation that God had put His name on. We have the same cause, to set up a group of people that Christ has put his name on to be a light to the world to be a testimony of Jesus Christ we have that same call the children of Israel had that call but the armies of the children of Israel were intimidated by a giant they were intimidated by Goliath and they backed down and they were shaking in their shoes and they wouldn't do what God had sent them to do well, I want to submit to you that the church for a long long time has been intimidated by a giant and that giant's name is Satan. And I'm going to tell you something. Goliath didn't do anything. He didn't lay a finger on one of them. He stood on a hill and hollered at them and scared them. And that's what's happening to the church. The Satan's out there saying, well, if you do this, I'm going to do this. And if you do that, I'm going to do that. And the church is shaking. Oh, we can't do that. This will happen or that will happen. He can't do anything to us. He cannot touch us. We've talked about this. He can't lay a finger on you because you are a child of God and anything that comes upon you has to go through the hands of God first. Right. Satan can't do nothing. All he's doing is exactly what Goliath did. Right. What's the church doing? Exactly what the armies of Israel did. Backing down. Holding our peace. Stay within our four walls, shutting the doors, and trying to keep the world out. We're not supposed to be doing that. We're not supposed to keep the world out. We're supposed to go out in the world. Amen. We are called to represent Jesus Christ. We are called to be a light, to stand for Him. His name is stamped on us. And what is the world seeing when they look at the church? A bunch of cowards, just like the armies of Israel. But there is a call. One little boy named David rose up and said, Is there not a call? I want to submit to you this morning that one little church called Jefferson Church can rise up and say, Is there not a call? I don't care how big the giant is. I don't care how loud he bellers. I don't care what he's got to say. He can be defeated. He will be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. And by the power of Jesus Christ. He will be defeated. The only thing that's stopping him from being defeated is people who are scared and they're hiding in their foxholes and they're hiding in their churches and they're not even going out to face the giant. One little boy. One little boy with God on his side did what a whole army was afraid to do. I'm going to tell you something. You as an individual, or us as a church, one individual, one little church can go out and do what the church world has become afraid to do. If we but realize there is a cause, and there is a cause that's worth standing up for. There is a cause that's worth fighting for. There is a cause that's worth dying for if need be. There is a cause. Amen. The cause is not to get blessed. The cause is not to get goosebumps. 
The cause is not to shout and run. The cause is not to do any of these other things. The cause is to lift up him who saved your soul. Amen. That's the cause. Amen. And by doing that, we win others to him. Once David stood up, and we're going to get a little more into this, but once David stood up, once David had been victorious, what did the rest of the army do? Then they joined him. If we stand up and we are victorious, people will see it can be done, and they'll begin to stand up, and they'll begin to be drawn in. But somebody's got to be first. And I'm going to say, let that be us. Let's be first. Let's stand up. Let's go out there and let's fight. We are in a battle, and it's time to act like soldiers. I know a lot's been going on within this little group of people. People going through this, and people going through that, and people having to put up with this, and people having to put up with that. But I'm going to tell you something. Before David got to this point, he put up with a lot of stuff. You can go back and you can read. He was out there with the sheep, and the lion came, and he had to face the lion, and the bear came, and he had to face the bear, and the wolf came, and he had to face the wolf. But he beat every one of them because he trusted his God. He didn't say, I beat him. He said, God delivered them into my hands. Because he trusted God to deliver them into his hands. He didn't count on his own way of doing things, on his own efforts, on his own strength, on his own way of thinking. He counted on God. And that's where we fail so often. i got to fix this. i got to do something. i got to come up with a solution. i got to find an answer. Your answer is Jesus Christ. Amen. Your answer is God. Count on him. Put it in his hands. Let him be the one who delivers. Amen. You all know the song probably. The battle's not mine, said little David. The Lord, that's thine. I'm in your favor. The battle's not mine, but the victory is. That's right. If the battle is God's, and God will give me the victory. What did it say? God delivered the lion into his hand. God delivered the bear into his hand. God delivered the wolf into his hand. God delivered Goliath into his hand. He got the victory, but God fought the fight. Mm -hmm. We can't, within ourselves, fight a lot of these battles. <laughs> but if we trust God, we can. I want to read some more in verse 45 of chapter 17. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. I want to back up here, and I want to apply this to us. Then said David to the Philistine, that Goliath is a representation of Satan. That Goliath is a representation of those who would stand against God. Goliath is a representation of everything that proclaims itself and lifts itself against God. And David is a representation of us, the children of God. And the Philistine came out with a sword and with a spear and with this and with that. And David came out in the power of God. But listen, we're facing the very same kind of thing. You've had giants in your life. A lot of you sitting here this morning over the past few months have faced giants. And they came at you. They might have come at you with depression. They might have come at you with anxiety. They might have come at you with financial problems, with family problems. I don't care whatever it was. It's the same thing that that Goliath had. That was that's our enemy's spear. That's our enemy's sword. That's our enemy's shield. He comes at you with those things. And those things begin to terrify us. And we begin to get scared of those things. But we got to take on the nature of David. And we got to say, you come at me with that. And you come at me with this. But I'm going to tell you, I come at you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And by the blood of the Lamb. And he has given me all power. And he has given me all authority to tread on you, to trample on you, to tear down your yeah. stronghold. And if we trust him, that's exactly what will happen. Amen. Amen. Listen to what he said. 
You come to me with all these things, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. We need church. We need to rise up. We need to look Satan square in the eye. And we tell him, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And by his blood, you are defeated. And he's going to have to back off. This day, will the Lord deliver thee into my head? I got a vision. I got a purpose. I got a goal, and I believe God has given it to me. We're going to take this community. This day I'm declaring. This day I'm making a statement. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever evil, whatever demons, whatever Satan is doing to hinder this church from reaching the law, we are going to conquer it. We are going to overcome it. We are going to put it down. We are going to reach this community for Christ. And once we reach this one, we'll go to the next one. And when we're done, everyone will move to another one. Because in the name of Jesus, I have the authority to proclaim it. I have the authority not only to say it, but to carry it out. If I will only do what David did, put it in the hands of the Almighty God. Amen. Let him fight the fight. But I'm going to be the one that stands. I got to face my fear. I got to look him in the eye and trust God. That's what we got to do. Whatever your battle is against, whatever you're coming up against, this formula works. So this day will the Lord deliver the end of my hand. There's been problems in this church. Over the years, there's been issues. There's been people getting mad. There's been people left. There's been people do that. There have been people do that. I've been praying about this. And I've been seeking God about this. And I'm going to say this today. It's not going to be anymore. All the stuff that Satan is using to poison people's mind, to keep people away, to get people hard and hard, they too can be conquered. They too can be overcome. My God is not limited. There is nothing. There is nothing. There is nothing. Nothing that can stand against him. Nothing. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a hard heart. I don't care if it's hard feeling. I don't care if it's hatefulness. I don't care if it's envy. I don't care if it's jealousy. I don't care if it's strife. My God is an overcoming God. Amen. This church will not be defeated anymore. No longer this day. As David said to that Philistine, it's going to be delivered into our hands. Amen. We're going to take what belongs to God. We're going to take it back. We let Satan come in and just do what he wants to do and steal what he wants to steal and mess with who he wants to mess with. I say no more. We draw a line and he ain't going no further. Amen. This day will the Lord deliver all these things into our hands just as he delivered Goliath into David's hands. He said, the Lord will deliver thee into my hand and I will smite thee. We're going to smite Satan. We're going to smite his demons. We're going to smite those who would rise against us. We're going to smite the, the homosexual lobby, the abortion lobby, the anti-God group. I don't care who they are. We are going to smite them. We'll take their head. They'll have no more power. They won't be able to come against us anymore. And we'll feed their carcasses to the fowls of the heavens. You, you got to get a hold of this. You got to understand this. This is yours. As a child of God, you have the authority. You have the power. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. No weapon formed against Amen. you can prosper. Right. If God be for you, who can be against right. you? Amen. It's time right. to just quit quoting verses and start living verses. Amen. Grace. Help us, Lord. He said, I'm going to do all these things. For what reason? That all the earth may know that there is a God. And we need to do these things so that all of Jefferson and all of Spring Grove and all of York and all of everybody else knows there is a God in Jefferson. Amen. Amen. Goes on. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came near 
and drew nigh to meet David. David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. David didn't cower. He didn't hold back. He didn't hide behind a rock and wait for him to get there. He ran towards him. And that's exactly what we got to do. We want to sit and pray and pray and pray and pray and keep on praying. And nothing's happening. Well, let's pray some more. What you got to do is you got to pray and then you got to get up and you got to go out and do something. Faith is acting on what you believe. Not just believing it, but putting some action to it. What did James say? If there is no works, it's dead. You got to work. You got to trust God. That's it. If you're waiting for God to tell you to get up and go and do it, I'm going to tell you, he already told you to get up and go and do it. It's right here. The word of God, the voice of God, the direction of God. He already said, get up and go out and do it. That's right. Amen. Right. Came to pass when the Philistines arose and came near and drew nigh to meet David. David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence the stone and slang it, smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. Now I want you to think about this. Here's this giant, this big guy. He's coming out with that spear. It's like a weaver's beam and a sword that David could probably barely even lift. And his shield was so big, he had to have a guy going in front of him to carry the shield. And David comes out with a little rock and a slingshot. And God. There's the key. You may think, I ain't nobody. I ain't, we don't got this. We don't got that. We can't do this. We can't do that. I'm going to tell you again, I can do all things Amen. through Christ. <laughs> he has equipped you with what you need to get the job done. What David had was a stone and a slingshot. You know why David had a stone and a slingshot? Because that's what he needed. Mm -hmm. He had exactly what he needed. He didn't improvise. He didn't take that just because that's the only thing he could have come up with. He was offered Saul's armor. He was offered the sword. He had any his choice of anything that the army had that he could have used. But what did he use? A stone and a slingshot because that's all he needed. Because God was on his side. Amen. And when God is on your side, it's not the size of your weapon. It's the size of your God. Amen. Amen. David went, and he hasted, and he ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. He put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, and the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. Boom, dropped him with a stone. You know what Peter said you are? A stone. A living stone. You have the power in you to drop the evil one. You have the power in you to take the giant off at the knees. You have the power in you to conquer any enemy that rises before you. He took him out with a stone. And Peter said that we are stones. We are stones that belong to Christ. And anything that belongs to Christ is powerful, is mighty. There's another scripture that says we are mighty to the tearing down of strongholds. Yes, yeah, Satan has strongholds. He has built problems and issues that envelope churches and envelope individuals. He's built these things around them to keep them from accomplishing what God would have to accomplish them. But with a stone, you can tear them down. You can destroy them. Said he dropped him and he ran out there and the stone sunk in his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. David prevailed because if we back all the way up, David said, I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. David prevailed because he came in God. He came in the power of God. He didn't come in his own power. He didn't come because he had mighty weapons. He didn't come because of anything other than that. He was standing as his God told him to stand. And he was doing what his God told him to do. And that's exactly what we need to do. And we have been told to stand. Having done all to stand. Now stand. 
Stand for God. Don't back down. Don't be pushed around. Don't keep your mouth shut. Stand for God. Amen. Yes. David stood for his God. And because he stood for his God, he was victorious. And I can't make this clear enough. I hope you get a hold of it. You can do the very same thing. Whatever Satan comes in your flesh comes up against you with, you can do the very same thing. If you are born again, child of God, you have the power. You have the authority. You have Christ on your side. I've done told you the scripture, but let them sink in. If God be for you, who can be against you? Nobody. That's who. That's right. We are more than conquerors. Amen. Let's live like it. We live defeated, and I'm sick and tired of it. The church has been defeated, and just sits, and moves, and moves, and grows. It's time to get up. Is there not a cause? It's time to get up, and go out, and to face the enemy, and to defeat the enemy, and to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's time. David took him down and slew him. Listen, there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood on the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheep thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Listen, God sent him with the stone and with the slain and he dropped him with that stone and he ran up there but he didn't have a sword. But God provided what he needed when he got there. The sword was there. He'll give you what you need every step of the way. What you need will be there if you will but trust him. If you will but believe him. If you will go with that knowledge, with that assurance, with that faith that he will deliver all things into your hand. Amen. Amen. You don't got to be a preacher. You don't got to be a teacher. You don't got to be a deacon. You don't got to hold no office. All you got to do is be a child of the living God. Amen. Amen. That's it. And trust him and believe him. And when you get there, he will provide exactly what you need. But first, you got to be willing to get up and go there. We can take back what Satan has stolen. I'm telling you again. I don't know why God keeps bringing me back to this. We need to know this. Satan has stolen a lot from this church. Yes. Over the years, he has stolen a lot from this church. Well, I'm taking it back. You want to go with me? Amen. Let's go take what he has stolen. Amen. And I don't know how many of you know this. I don't know how many of you have heard this, but I have heard it. We got a bad name. Mm -hmm. It's time to take that out. Right. It's time to take that down. It's time to let people know that there is a God. His name is Jehovah. His name is Jesus Christ. And he resides in the hearts and in the soul of the people who attend this church. And because of that, this is a people that are empowered. This is a people that are equipped. This is a people that are going to go out and conquer and proclaim Jesus Christ. Amen. David got there. After he dropped it, as I said, he didn't have a sword, but God provided. I want you to get that. I want you to understand it. He will always provide what you need. It may not be there till the very last second, but he will always provide what you need to do the job. It will always be there. The only way it won't be there is if you quit trusting. That's right. If you quit believing. If you quit counting on God. That's the only way you're going to do with that. Right. Otherwise, you trust God. You count on God. You put it all in God's hand. You begin to go and do what he has called you to do. And when you get where you need to go, whatever you need will be there. Right. He will provide it. He will give it to you. And when David got there, and that sword was there, God gave him what he needed. And he took, and he chopped off his head. And what happened? The rest of the Philistines were hiding for the hills. If we stand once, that shows that, that, that spiritual realm of evil out there that we mean business. Mm -hmm. And they began to shake a little bit. 
and they began to quake a little bit, and they began to get a little bit worried. I'm not going to tell you they're not going to come back and fight. I'm not going to tell you that they're going to run away and stay away because that ain't going to happen. They're going to continue to come, but it's going to show them that we mean business, Man. and then they will know <laughs> that we know that we can be victorious. They will know that we know that we are more than conquerors. Jake said it this morning in Sunday school. Where's the power? Where's the power? The same place it has always been. That power is in Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want that power to reside in you, you've got to be like David. You gotta stand on it. You gotta trust it. You gotta believe it. You gotta walk in it. You gotta speak it. You gotta trust it in every situation and everything you come up against. Whatever your giant is, it does not matter. You can be victorious. I gotta back up, just hit a couple things, and I think I'll be done. When the Philistine, when Goliath came out there with his sword and with his spear, I kind of touched on this. Those are the weapons that Satan uses against you. He has all kinds of things that he will use against you. I mentioned some depression, anxiety, uh, financial problem, family problem, whatever it is. And I've taught on this before, and I just wrote it down yesterday just, well, because God told me to, he knew I was going to get to it. But listen, God is amazing. So far above amazing that I can't describe it. But did you know that God gives you the answer to every problem you have in here. It is in here. And Timmy says, if you would study to show yourself approved, you would find a lot of these answers that you're always asking the questions about. I want to share some with you real quick, and then I'll be done. I've taught on this before. Some of you may remember it. But these names of the giants that the children of Israel fought mean something. And the names of the people that defeated them mean something. And within those things, God shows you how to be victorious. Uh, for example, you know what Goliath means? It means to exile. What is it to exile? To keep you out of, to keep you away from, to take you from something and banish you. When you are born again and you become a child of God, you enter into a new land. You enter into a new promise. All the things of the kingdom of God now belong to you. But Satan wants to exile you from that. And how does he do that? By getting you depressed, by bringing anxiety upon you, by bringing stress, financial problem, whatever problem it is. That's how he does it. But God gives us the answer. You know what? David means well beloved of God. You remember this, God loves you. He loves you enough to send his son. Jesus Christ loved you enough to come and suffer and bleed and die. If he loves you that much, do you not think he will take care of any other problem that you've got? He delivered your soul from hell. He delivered your soul from the clutches of Satan. He delivered you from an eternity of torment. What is he going to do when you have some little tiny problem? That's like a fly to him. Right. Amen. Listen to these things. God puts it in here. He wants you to know. Um, let me go here real quick. In 2 Samuel, verse 15, 21-15. Uh, Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel, and David went down, and his servants went down, and fought against the Philistines, and David waxed faint. And Ishbibinah, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass and weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruah, succored him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Okay, listen, here's another giant that they had to face. That giant's name was Ishbinibah. You know what his name means? It means my dwelling is at Nob. You know what Nob means? It means high and lifted up. Self-exaltation. When you get so full of yourself that you think you are somebody, that's when Satan will take you out. When you get a little higher than you're supposed to get, we all know the scripture that God said, humble yourself and he will lift you up. He will bring you to that place. If you realize that the power is not in you, it is in him. It is in trust in him. Him, then he will bring you to that place. He will lift you up. The guy that defeated that giant's name was Ibashai. And you know what his name means? It means meekness. Meekness defeated self-exaltation. Meekness defeated getting puffed up. Meekness defeated getting all full of yourself. I'm going to try to hurry. If you go on here, verse 18. 
And it came to pass after this, there was again a battle with the Philistines at God. Then Sibachai and the Hushasite slew Sap, which was of the sons of the giant. That giant there's name was Sap. You know what his name means? Low, basin, bring low, depression. I have seen more depression in the last couple years than I can remember all the rest of my life. That's what a Satan's major tool. He gets people depressed. He brings them down and really works on them. But the guy that defeated him, that's Sibichai, his name means, his name means the stream, double haste, and hope. We have a healing stream that flows from Calvary. We have a healing stream that flows from the throne of God. And when he begins to get on you and try to repress you and try to bring you down, just take a dip in that stream. That's all you got to do. Trust God. Get in that healing water and let him restore you. But listen, it says, double haste. Don't go around. Don't wait. Don't give Satan time to play around. At the first sign of problem, at the first sign of you feel yourself going down or being brought down or the anxiety or the depression coming on, don't fool around. Get to God Amen. before it gets a root in, before it gets a handhold. Get to Him and get in that stream. And because it's only in Him that we have hope. That is where our hope lies. That is who is our hope. And that guy's name, Matt, stream, double haste, and hope. Are you getting this? Are you understanding? God put all your answers right there. Whatever you're facing, how to defeat them. These are the weapons that God gives us. That's our stone. That's our sling. These things that God gives us. It goes on down and says, And there was again a battle of God with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jair, or again, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And it doesn't give his name there, but if you go to 1 Chronicles, and chapter 20, verse 5, it says that his name was Lami. And the, that name Lami means to drive out by force the lion and the brother of exile. We all know who the lion is, that roaring lion who walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And he comes up against us, and he tries to drive us out. He tries to drive us away from the promises of God. He tries to drive us so that we quit trusting God, to exile us from those things of God. That's exactly what he's trying to do to you. But this guy that defeated him, his name meant God has been gracious, and he enlightens, and of the house of bread. God has been gracious. What did he tell Paul? My grace is sufficient for in your weakness you are made strong through my strength. God has been gracious. As I already said, and I won't keep going, I can't list this wrong, but he saved your soul from hell. He delivered you. He continually watches out for you. He is gracious. He is not going to let you be defeated if you trust him. If God has been gracious, he enlightens. He gives you the knowledge. He gives you the tools. He gives you the equipment. He gives you everything you need because also in this name, you are of the house of bread. Jesus Christ, the living bread that came down from heaven that if any man would eat of this bread, he will never die. You belong to that household. You belong to that kingdom. And because you do, God is gracious to you and he will give you the knowledge you need if you trust him, if you believe him, if you put your confidence in him and stand up as David stood up and go in God. Amen. One more. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where it was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers, or on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimei, the brother of David, slew him. Now listen, this giant's odd. He's different. He's extraordinary. He had six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot. He was different. He was unique. He was far different than all the other giants. And we are all individual. And your problem is different than mine. And yours is unique to you. And yours is unique to you. It doesn't matter how unique it is. God will give you the way to defeat it. But I want you to think about this. That, that giant that had the six fingers and the six toes, six is the number of man. Mm -hmm. 
These are things that beset the flesh. These are things that beset men. These are things that are going to beset you. As long as you are in the flesh, these things are going to come. These giants are going to come that are unique to your situation and your circumstance. And everybody doesn't face what you're facing. But it doesn't matter. God is still the one who can deliver you from this giant. The one that delivered them, that defeated this giant was Jonathan, the son of Shimei, the brother of David. And this guy's name, you know what this guy's name means? I love this one. Jehovah has given. Not will give. Not did give. Present tense. Whatever your situation, whatever your service, that Jehovah has already given it to you. If you believe it, if you trust it, if you have confidence, if you have faith, and if you put it in God's hand, Jehovah has already given it to you. It goes on, that's not it. His name also means God has heard. He hears you. He hears you, and He delivers for you. If you trust Him, if you believe Him, if you really understand, you don't got to be a special person. You don't got to fast for two weeks. You don't got to do anything but be a child of God and trust Him. Amen. That's it. Because the power is yours. It's in Amen. you. He's given it to you. You are more than a conqueror. Not will be. Not could be. Not might be. If you trust God, if you believe God, if you have confidence in God, you are more than a conqueror. And He hears you. And He delivers letters to you. And this guy's name also means, well, be loved of God because you are loved of God. He will deliver all these things into your hand. Right. If you believe it, if you trust it, now it's time that we as individuals and we as a church do what David did. It's time that we stand up. We look the giant in the eye and say, we're sick and tired of your big mouth. We're sick and tired of your belly. You come out here with all this stuff, but we come in the name of the Lord and we're going to take you down Amen. and run at him. And we will be victorious if we go in God. Right. We talked about power and authority and all these things for a long, long time. And again, it came up in Sunday school. Where is the power? Where is the power? It's in God. That's where it is. And if He is in you, where is the power? Here. Here. He has come to dwell in us. And if the power is in Him and He's dwelling in you, you got the power. Man. You got the authority. He's already told you. We say, I don't understand. We say these things. We read these things. We say we believe them. We quote the scriptures and we live defeated. Mm -hmm. It's time to quit it. That's right. If you want to be defeated, then go be defeated and quit pretending. Mm -hmm. right. If you want to be a victorious, conquering child of God, then get up and go do it. That's right. That's right. Amen. It's time to do it. Mm -hmm. It's time to take back what belongs to us, to the children of God, to the church of God. It's time to go and take it back. Mm. And I'm going. I'd love to have you all go along. But you've got to make that decision. You've got to make that choice. We can go out of here in the power of Jesus Christ and tear down strongholds and take down giants and make a difference for the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and make a difference for the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. We can do it and we will do it if we decide we're going to trust God and put our confidence in Him. It will happen. Yes. It's not maybe, it's not if, it's not might, it's not after you faith, it's not after you pray, it's not after you get anointed, it's after you trust God Amen. and really believe God. That's when it happens. There's not a one sitting in here. Not a one. If you are born again, that doesn't have authority through Jesus Christ, by that blood that he shed, that doesn't have authority to cast out demons, right. to run them out of your area of influence, to run them out of your sphere of influence. Every one of us who's had the blood applied has that. That's right. But what are we going to do with it? We're going to continue the same old, same old church as usual. Yeah. Gather together and just hope I get to feel good. Yeah. And then go home. That's not what you're here for. Sir. God did not place you here to feel good. Sorry. He did not place you here to get goosebumps. 
He did not place you here to shout and run. He allows those things and he does that thing because he is so good. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're here for. You know, we've gotten this idea that Jesus only exists to make me happy. That's how the church acts. Think about it. That's what's taught. That's what's preached. That's what, how Christians mm -hmm. live. He's only here to make me happy. He's only here to fix my finances and fix my family. We got it backwards. He's not here for us. Right. We're here for him. Amen. Amen. I don't know how many times Amen. I've said this, and it's just as true as the first time I said it. Mm -hmm. It ain't about you. That's right. That's right. Exactly. It's never been about you. It never will be about you. That's right. That's right. It's, we need to get our heads right. We have come to the point where we believe it's about us. God's just there to give us stuff, do stuff, make us happy. But it's not the case. Right. We're here for him. And yes, he will bless you, and he will reward you, and he'll allow you to feel that sweet, sweet spirit, and, and do all the good things. He will do that. But not if that's all you're after. Mm -hmm. If that's all you want, if that's all you're seeking after, forget it. We need to do the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. We need to be about the Father's business. We need to put the armor on, and we need to go fight. Mm -hmm. We need to go face the giant. Just like that little stone took out of Goliath. Every little stone sitting here can take down giant after giant after giant. Mm -hmm. The giants in your own life and the giants that are coming against the church. The giants that are coming against your family. Whatever giant. It does not matter. I read you a whole list of giants. They were all defeated mm -hmm. by the things of God. Everyone. I'm stopped. There's a lot more to get into. I've got to have enough. <coughs> I pray. Get a hold of this. I read this, and, I, and this is not what I was going to preach, but I read it yesterday. And as I was sitting here, God began to get it to me. And as He delivered it here this morning, it's got me a little worked up. It's got me a little excited. I'm ready to go out and get in a fight. I want to go out and take down a couple of giants. Yeah. I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. I expect this church to stand up and to begin to fight and to take back what belongs to us. He can't have it anymore. Amen. I'm not going to let him keep Amen. anything that belongs to the children of God. And then when we're done doing that, I'm going to go down here and take Jefferson from him. And if we've done that, we're going to just move on in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to go conquering and to conquer. Amen. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't get the laughing noise. Let's pray. Thank you, 